present Dr. Leire Iriarte. Hello, everybody. Uh, first, thank you for the invitation to participate in this uh, um, conference. And uh, thank you for being here. Uh, I work for the International Institute for Sustainability Analysis and Strategy. And I'm happy to be here to talk a little bit about sustainability challenges of good energy in developing and developed countries. First, let's see the big picture about biomass consumption. On the left side, you can see the biomass consumption distribution among the various sectors. In fact, most of the uh, 180 equivalent exajoules consumed at present are used in the food and feed sector. Good consumption represents about 27%. Half of this amount is used for materials and half for energy. Most of the good used for energy is consumed in developing countries, usually in a non-sustainable way. It's expected that biomass consumption by 2050 will grow, ranging from 200 exajoules to about 425 exajoules. On the right side, you can see the role of bioenergy in the International Energy Agency 2050 Global Energy Outlook according to the two-degree scenario. Renewables are expected to increase their share on energy provision, and biomass is anticipated to play a key role on this. Of course, technological, technological developments are expected, so biomass consumption will not rely on traditional forms. When we talk about uh, bioenergy sustainability, we need to consider not only the planet, but also people and profit. This table is a comprehensive review of criteria and indicators that should be taken into account. On the environmental side, we should consider resource efficiency, climate change, biodiversity, soils, water, and air emissions. With respect to the social side, the criteria to be considered are participation and transparency, secure tenure of land, employment and labor conditions, as well as food security. In the economic theme, production costs need to, to be included. Within sustainability considerations, climate effects of forest-based bioenergy is a very relevant aspect. Currently, the vast majority of forest managers receive no revenue for avoiding deforestation or from carbon sequestration. In a comprehensive analysis, um, several aspects to evaluate GHG benefits of forest bioenergy have to be taken into account. Those considerations include spatial aspects, forest management, forest product types, downstream and upstream market effects, and energy substitution. Nonetheless, approaches that use categories of bioenergy feedstock production as the one shown in this table might be seen as a very crude first order estimate. These approaches are subject to significant uncertainty, so caution should be used if such processes are applied. In any case, as you can see here, some feedstocks such as uh, primary forest residues, landscape, and care wood can offer CO2 reductions in the short term. It's also very important to consider that secondary forest residues and soil rotation copies on marginal agricultural land deliver short-term GHG savings. On this slide, you can see some of the opportunities offered by bioenergy systems. First, uh, it can provide new cultivation systems that enrich agrobiodiversity. It can help management at the landscape level, which is also quite important. It offers better water management to secure ecosystem functions, and bioenergy crops can be more drought tolerant than agricultural, agricultural crops, and perennials can improve water retention. Also, income could be generated from residues obtained from landscape or habitat management. Intercropping 
<coughs> with food and agroforestry plus cultivation of perennial crops in a, on low carbon and degraded land can improve carbon balances and can help to restore soils. So this can reduce land competition. An example of that could be the green walls in Africa that can deliver fuel good and modern bioenergy, providing income and offering a base for agroforestry. So food security could be improved in parallel. To reap the opportunities that bioenergy can bring, we could learn from experiences already in place. For example, Forest Oriental in Uruguay has set up a socially inclusive project, planting degraded grassland with eucalyptus. This experience includes a program that encourages landowners to diversify their land use with sustainable plantation forestry. They have certified forest management and the chain of custody with FSC and PFC standards. Also, this program uh, is part of the Next Generation Plantations project. This is a very brief overview of uh, key sustainability considerations. You have my contact details here and I'll be very happy to clarify anything that could be needed. Thank you very much for your attention.